Hi everyone! Okay, so in this lecture or in this video, um, we're going to be looking at functions. Um, and so we kind of saw in our last few videos that when we look at random variables, we can kind of do whatever we want. Um, so we can actually look at random variables as a function of another random variable. So since it's a variable, we can do functions and kind of have fun. So normally in like a standard way, so using standard variables, we get something like this, right? We get y is equal to f of x. While doing this in random variables, we get the exact same thing, y is equal to f of x. But what does this kind of mean, right? It doesn't really like, what is this interpreted as? How, what does this um, mean exactly? Um, basically what it, this is really saying is maybe I should highlight this. Um, what it's really saying is if x has some value, then y has the value f of x. Uh, so if, um, for example, if the probability of x is equal to three is one third, uh, then the probability of y equal to f of x, um, and if y is equal to f of x uh, is equal to, maybe I should do four here. <laughs> that'll be easier, um, is x squared, then the probability that y is equal to two, um, well, this is just probability that f of x is equal to two. Oh wait, I did this wrong. This should be, we'll do y squared <laughs> is equal to x. Uh, I guess I'll do square root. As you can tell, I'm making this example up on the fly. <laughs> so this should be okay now right is equal to f of x so this is equal to the square root of x is equal to 2 this is uh, x is equal to 2 squared this is p of x is equal to 4 so it's equal to 1 third so what we get is p of y is equal to 2 is equal to 1 third and we didn't even need to know what y is so this is the basic idea of um, using one distribution to kind of help you figure out the other distribution. Uh, let's look at an example that I've actually prepared beforehand. <laughs> so it'll be a little easier. And you can kind of see where this actually plays somewhere in real life. So suppose we're really rolling two dice. So we take two dice and we roll them. Um, and we want to calculate the sum of the two variables, to the two values. Uh-huh, sum. That means we got a function, ladies and gentlemen, and humans of all genders. Um, so we've done this a few times, but we're going to do this in a slightly different way using functions, using random variables, etc. So as before, the thing that doesn't change is we're going to keep the representation the same. So ij is always going to represent our two die. So if we let x, so we're going to let x be the sum of our dice. Um, and then what we know, we already know what the distribution we're going to get, right? So we know that the distribution is given by this, right? So this little thing here. Uh, so remember, this is um, like, for example, one plus one, this is one plus two and two plus one, that's why it's two over 36, um, etc. So this gives us a distribution. Um, so what we can do is we can let um, our functions be, so we let we can let y represent the outcomes y, um, ij, right? So we let y be ij. And what this means is, and we can let f be the function um, i plus j. So what we're really saying is here, f of y is equal to f of um, ij. ij is equal to i plus j, which is just our x. Um, so in other words, f of y is equal to x is what we're saying. Um, this part is kind of in quotes. It's not exactly... Um, this, but yeah. Uh, so what does this give? So if we say p of x is equal to 3, well, this we've calculated, right? p of x is equal to 3. This we have is 2 over 36. Uh, but another way we can kind of do this is to write it as p of f of y is equal to 3. And in this case, this is going to be um, one th 136 which is one from one plus two, and one of this, plus one of 36. So in other words, what we really have here is um, P, 
such that i plus j is equal to 3. So this is just a sum of i plus j is equal to 3 uh, probability. Yeah, 1 over uh, 36. Because there's two different ways to do this, right? So i is equal to 2, um, i equal 2, j equal 1, and i equal 1, j equal 2. I need a condition here that i and j are less than or equal to 6 and greater than or equal to 1. Um, so this is obviously, or I guess I should scroll up. This is obviously an easy, boring example. Um, and it's like, uh, I don't really see how this is really useful. But we are able to do things more complicated, right? We're going, we can use these variables to kind of do things in a much more complicated way, right? We can have functions like this. Um, and so like, even though we're looking at something super simple, this can give us something much more complicated if we want, um, and it gives us more information. Um, so we'll stop here for this little part. Um, we're not going to use functions that often, um, but it's a good thing to know because they will be used occasionally. Um, and if they're always, if they become confusing, you can just come back to these later, these notes that are on, um, or feel free to ask, um, I don't mind. Um, so yeah, so I will see you in the next video for joint distributions. Um, which is also an exciting topic. See you then.